Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. We are picking up with new morning mercies, and I'm just going to take it from here. Also, I'm a little tired, so apologies, my energy's kind of low. <clears throat> but I kind of pre-read some of this, and I know that God's energy is not low. His energy's at an all-time high, and so I'm expectant that he's going to perk us up this morning. Okay, the devotional says this. The temporary pleasures of this present world are meant to point you to the lasting pleasures of knowing God. This story in John chapter 6 didn't end the way the crowd thought that it would. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus has just fed a large crowd of people with a little boy's lunch. The crowd is amazed at his power and excited about his ability to provide for them physically. They think that this is just the type of king that they want. But Jesus is having none of it. To the surprise of the crowd, he runs and hides. When the crowd finally catches up with him, they confess their confusion at his response. And Jesus essentially says, I came to earth not just to be your physical provider, but to meet your deepest spiritual needs. Every good physical thing that I give you is meant to point you to the spiritual provision that you need and that I will make for you in my life, death, and resurrection. Every physical blessing is designed by God to be a sign that points you to the spiritual blessings that are found only in surrendering your heart to him. This leaves us all with questions. What do we really want out of life? What do we really want from God? Do we really esteem his work in grace? Do we really admit how much we need his moment-by-moment -moment rescue? Do we value his forgiveness? Do we really care to be transformed? Are we concerned about the character of our hearts and the condition of our souls? Do we have any interest in being holy as he is holy? All these questions boil down to one question. Do we value God's grace or would we rather have comfortable lives, which includes nice houses, cars, vacations, cuisine, and friends? What gift could Jesus offer you that would make you want to make him your king? Humbly meditate on this question today. Could it be that you want him to be your king for all the wrong reasons? Why is this devotional slapping us around right now? If your answer is yes, don't run and hide from him because there's grace for that too. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Remember earlier when I said, that I'm tired, you know, I'm not, I'm not really feeling, not, I'm not in a bad mood, I'm just tired, you know, life. And I said that God's not tired and he's going to bring it. Well, <laughs> here we are. Oh my word. That was so powerful to me and I hope it was so powerful to you. You know, as I read these devotionals, I'm kind of, kind of prepping what direction I want to take in, what I want to say afterwards. And this one, I, I have, I feel like three different directions. And I'm going to try to say those as quickly as possible because the last point is the most important point, And that actually involves you. So the first thing I want to say is, have you all ever heard of a book called This Present Darkness by Frank Peretti? It's like a Christian, not sci-fi, but it's like a, it involves like the spiritual realm as well as the physical realm. It's one of my favorite books I've ever read. Um, if you have never checked that out, and you're open to reading a really entertaining, convicting, fun read um, that 
kind of parallels what's happening in the physical world during like a story and then with the spiritual world. So it kind of follows the the people here on earth, but it also follows the heavenly host and the demonic uh, spirits and stuff like that. And so definitely recommend that. The reason I share that is, is because it really opened my eyes to see some of the parallels of what's happening. Because again, what we just read in John chapter six, this is, Jesus has just fed the crowd and now they're chasing after him and they're like, well, we want more. We want more bread. And he's like, I see what you want physically, but I can satisfy that and I can satisfy you to where you won't hunger again. So there's a spiritual element too that takes it so much deeper. And whenever I read that book called This Present Darkness, it really opened my eyes to see the parallels in my life of what's happening physically is actually also happening in my life spiritually in terms of my relationship with God. You know, an example would be um, our washing machine just broke. It's brand new. It just broke. And like, I'm pretty annoyed, to be honest with you by it. I'm like, why? Why is this happening? Um, but there's a lot of little things that are kind of, kind of been annoying me. And, but what's happening in the spiritual realm is I'm not trusting God to give me peace. I'm putting my peace and everything working perfectly, which is not realistic. And so you, you you get what I'm saying. There's a parallel there. And so that's the first thing I want to talk about is I recommend that book if you guys ever wanted to check that out. The second thing was this question of, could it be that you want God to be your king for all the wrong reasons? And that was just powerful. And I mentioned that is because Everyone who's listening to this or watching this, we're all believers. We all want to honor God. We all want to serve him. We want to experience him. Like, yes, but is it for the right reasons? Because I'm not talking about whether we want to serve God or not. That's a whole different ball game for like people maybe who aren't following the Lord or they're not Christians, but we are. And so how do we unpack any disconnect that we have about actually saying, yes, I do want him Lord and King over my life but for what reasons? And so that's the second thing that I really wanted to point out um, because I know when I first gave my life to Christ, I thought my life was gonna get easier and it actually got a little harder, uh, but in a good way. I had to learn how to die to myself. I had to learn to say no to myself. I had to learn not to go off of every like impulse decision that I wanted where I'm just trusting my feelings. I I had to like really wrestle with myself a lot my life got harder and there was a piece of my life where I thought God was just going to make my life better immediately. And so there is this idea of like, okay, well, who is God actually to me? And that leads me to the third part and the final part. If you all have some time, and I know we all do, we got to prioritize time. I really recommend that you go through these questions because after reading them, I was like, wow. And I think what's important um, is to not give your Christianese answer and I won't do it either. So I just took like a spiritual gifts test and a, a few other tests, right? And um, Tori and I are learning how to craft like a mission statement for our family and we're taking these like tests. And then as you're going through these questions, I started selecting answers of who I wish I were or who I, who I think I am versus who I actually am. And so I don't say that in a way to like self-hate at all. I just, I just need to be realistic with myself in this moment. And so I had to go back through and be like, okay, like the the person who struggles with perfectionism and people pleasing wants to choose this answer, but I actually am this answer. And so as you go through these questions, I'm gonna reread them. And I just wanna encourage you to answer them truthfully because God knows your heart and this will help unpack where you are versus where you wanna be. And so, and maybe all the answers are perfect for you. I'm just saying, it it could be a lot of fun. So the questions are this. What do you really want out of life? What do you really want from God? Do we really esteem his work of grace? Do we really admit how much we need his moment by moment rescue? Do we really value his forgiveness? Do we really care and want to be transformed? Are we concerned about the character of our hearts and the conditions of our souls? Do we have any interest in being holy as he is holy? And 
yeah, if you get a sec to kind of go through some of those and unpack those with him, because there's a few of those, like, why do I want God? And that's kind of one of the things I unpacked with the second point I was talking about. It's like, I initially wanted God because I wanted an easier life. I wanted to stop stressing so much, but then my life actually got a little harder. And so it's like, I, I had to learn how to worship and love God because he's God, not because he's going to be my personal savior or servant in the sky. You know, and so I think it'd be good to answer those questions, kind of unpack those, because those are deep ones, and it'll really uh, check our heart and just give us like a, a good update of like where we are at right now. And if any of those questions aren't the answers that you wish they were, that's not a problem. There's grace for that, right? And God will meet you right there. But now you know that there's something to work on. You know, there's something to unpack. I'm gonna pray. Sign out. Lord, thank you for meeting us here. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for never canceling your appointments with us. You are such a good father to us. Praise you, Lord. Thank you for always loving us. Thank you for always offering more grace and more grace and more grace to us, Lord. Lord, help us to value the forgiveness, the grace, the mercy, the help, the support the love that you shower us with daily. Help us to see those things. Help us to experience those things. Help us to relish in those things. Help us to share those things. Help us to not just live these kind of quiet lives where we're resisting the parallels, what's happening in the spiritual world, and we're just kind of existing here in the physical realm on earth. God, we know that you are the bread of life. We know that when we partake with you, we will never hunger again. But our souls are hungry right now, God. We can feel it. And sometimes we're reaching for all the wrong things or the things that are right in front of us. Help us to make you the thing that's right in front of us. Help us to make you the thing we reach for, the true right thing. In your sons and we pray, amen. Amen, y'all. Now's that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and start unpacking those questions. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece, and don't forget that we love you. We love you. We'll be talking to you tomorrow. Aloha. Aloha.